Today's word of the day comes from the book of Luke, chapter 23, verse 26. Luke 23, verse 26. It says, now as they led him away, they laid hold of a certain man, Simon, a Cyrenian, Cyrenian, who was coming from the country, and on him they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. Amen. Now, as they led him away, they laid hold of a certain man, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming from the country, and on him they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. This is obviously a very, very powerful moment. Jesus has already been beaten and scourged and spit on and just beyond recognition. And now he's got to get the cross. But it's obvious that Jesus doesn't even have the strength to carry it on his own through all the pain and everything that's happening to him. So they bring this man, Simon, and they give him the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. What stood out to me in this verse today was the word after. It really stood out, and I just let the Spirit lead me here, and this is what I felt God wanted us to hear today. That word after is in Greek. It's called opisthen. Opisthen. It means behind or after, from behind or after. In other words, Simon took that cross after Jesus, behind him. And what did Jesus say in Luke 9, 23? He said to all, everyone, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Amen. Follow me. Come after me. This is exactly, anyone who desires to come after me, let him deny himself, step one, and take up his cross daily and follow me. So we know about denying ourselves is surrendering to his will and not our own, uh, doing what he wants and not what we want, because he's purchased us and we have everything we ever needed now and definitely after we're done on this planet, it'll be just everything we've ever wanted and more. But taking up that cross daily, what does that look like? What does it mean to carry the cross and follow him? Our cross looks something like this. Mark chapter 10, verses 29 through 30. Jesus answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. That's the following surrender the part. Who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands. Here it is with persecution and in the age to come, eternal life. When we follow Jesus, that cross involved a lot of persecution on Jesus. When he was carrying that thing, when he was nailed to it, it was nothing but persecution. When we do the will of God, we will be persecuted. There is no way around it because the cross is an offense to those who are perishing. The the way of God is completely the opposite of the way of the world the ruler of this world. And so anytime we're following the Holy Spirit, we can expect that people are going to be irritated with us. They're going to persecute us, not as bad as Jesus was, but, you know, but we're all going to face it. And that's part of carrying our cross. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14 says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Amen. Praise the Lord. So this broad way is the easy way. It's the way of, you know, just thinking that we can do good things and live our life and all that. But the way of surrender and dealing with persecution, that's the narrow, difficult way. It's total surrender and knowing that God is happy and pleased with us. And when we do his will, we are going to face that persecution. But in the end, we too would hear, well done, good and faithful servant. It's a, it's a blessing to even to be taste a little bit of what he went through as we follow him. And with it comes great reward. Praise the Lord. In Romans 8, 36 and 37, as it is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. 
Yet in all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Amen. Praise the Lord. This all sounds good. Even Peter thought, oh, yeah, I can do this. I'll even die for you. But the truth is, the only way we can do it is if he does it. And that's why it says in Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word today. We thank you that you understand you're the only one who could go through all that willingly. We can think we can, but ultimately you're showing us we cannot. We cannot withstand persecution, the kind that you went through, and stay faithful. But because of your word and because of what you're doing in us, we recognize that if we ask you that you will do it through us, you will give us the strength, the faith, you'll help us rest in you through whatever we got to go through, and you will cause us to make it all the way, whether it's just being persecuted verbally or whatever we got to face. Help us, Lord, carry that cross behind you and follow you all the way. And we know you'll do it if we want it. And we thank you for that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. And that is our word of the day. Praise the Lord.